Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest GFS, GFS ensembles. We'll also have a look at weather warnings as we do have extreme heat warnings still in force and we do have some heavy rain warnings, uh, yellow warnings in force for this weekend as we are looking increasingly likely we're going to be seeing some heavy rain and some significant thunderstorm activity throughout Friday evening through until Sunday. We'll have a look at that over the precipitation charts as well. Now, do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. I can see on the analytics, only 35% only of those viewing my videos are actually subscribed. So, please, if you do enjoy my videos, make sure you do click that subscribe button. It's free, and it really does help me out as I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. So, if we do, firstly, have a look on Twitter, as, again, we have reached a record Um in Northern Ireland, in Castledurg, we have reached 31.3 degrees. Now, it only beats the record on Saturday by 0.1 of a degree, but it's a new temperature record in Northern Ireland. Um, now, it's not super high for the UK at all, but it is a record in Northern Ireland. And again, it's because we've got that high pressure with very hot air sitting over the top of Northern Ireland with very little mixing of the air, allowing these temperatures to come possible. The highest temperature of this heat wave so far was yesterday, where we saw 32.3 degrees in Heathrow. And that is looking like it may be the peak temperature for this heat wave. Now, on the models over the last uh, few videos, we were looking potentially at 33 degrees. Um, but I do suspect over the next couple of days the heat is shifting westwards for sort of eastern Wales, West Midlands, southwestern areas, and it's looking like at the moment only around 31 or 32 degrees as possible. So, have seen some very hot temperatures, and again, another record is broken in Northern Ireland. So, if we first will have a look at the weather warnings, um, as we both have heat warnings and we do have rain warnings. Now, we've got these two heat warnings that we've had a look at over the last few days, and they haven't changed. We've got the southwestern heat warning that expires tomorrow at midnight, um, and we've got the one in Northern Ireland that expires on Friday at midnight. Both for significant impacts, as, as we've stated in the early videos, we're expanding it a little bit more. Um, these Amber warnings are different to the standard weather warnings we get for rain, thunderstorms, snow, etc. These are more based purely on impacts, not only from the weather, but from things so that will happen because of the heat. I.e. in southwestern areas, one of the reasons why they have the amber heat warning instead of areas potentially around London, which are seeing temperatures in the same ballpark, if not a little bit higher, it's because in the southwest we've got a lot more coastline, a lot more beaches, so there's an increased issues with water hazards. So it's not only just the weather that's affecting um, the Bet Office putting in these amber warnings for extreme heat, but it's also other associated risks because of the hot weather. So we do have these warnings in force, and they are over the next few days. It'll be interesting to see how often these are used, whether they're used again this summer, or whether it's sort of a... Um, just specific heat wave sort of type event or whether if we do see a sort of Spanish plume at some point over the next couple of months where we see temperatures rocket up into the 30s for a day or two whether we'll see warnings for that or whether it's just for sustained heat wave so we'll just have to see how they do develop as these are new features over the last week or so for this specific heat wave but we'll now have a look at the rain warning which is now in force for Saturday and Sunday just the extreme heat warning on um, Friday, but there are still the risk of a few thunderstorms through Friday night. But it's Saturday and Sunday, we have this yellow warning for us. It's a widespread yellow warning. And I do suspect it'll either get condensed or it's an amber warning put in force in some specific areas because heavy rain and thundery showers may lead to flooding and transport disruption in a few places. Again, a very broad warning. Um, not all areas here are going to see the massive impacts, um, but all areas are probably going to be seeing some uh, persistent rain at times. Outbreaks of rain and some thunderstorms are expected to spread from the southwest on Friday night, this introducing unsettled conditions to much of England and Wales for Saturday and Sunday. Heavy thundery showers are likely to break out by day, particularly on Sunday, where they could be widespread and torrential. 
Lightning and hail are also expected with rainfall amounts varying from place to place, but there's potential for up to 100 millimetres of rain. That's 10 centimetres of rain, and undoubtedly that would cause some significant flooding issues, especially in areas that have been badly affected by thunderstorms in the last couple of weeks. For example, in the London area, we've seen some very significant thunderstorms over the last week or so. And in sort of East Anglia as well, we've seen some significant thunderstorms as well as central, southern and the southeastern areas. So these areas getting more rain, 100 millimetres, could cause flash flooding. You can see by the impact matrix, it has high impact but low likelihood at this stage as it really depends on where that convection does take place. So we now do briefly run through the GFS and the GFS ensemble, just to have a look at the general long-term uh, outlook as I haven't looked at the last few videos concentrating on the heat and thunderstorm risk. So we see that low pressure um, overnight Friday into Saturday move up from the southwest. It's also moving in some hotter air, which is going to fuel those thunderstorms briefly through Saturday before cooler air does sweep through through Sunday and Monday for all areas. And we do go into a much fresher feeling um, air mass with the air coming in off the Atlantic, even though it's not terribly um, cold at 850 HPA, it's the surface that's going to be a lot cooler. Only peak temperatures are going to be around low 20s, if not high teens, as we do have a westerly wind, and it does like it's going to spiral up low pressures, um, low pressure systems during next week. And again, we're going to see more low pressure rambling in off the Atlantic, and we could see more rain with that. And it doesn't look encouraging for the start of. Uh, August as well. We are in the long term time frame, so uncertainty is high, but it's looking like low pressure is going to dominate the weather with some northern blocking. We've not seen this for a while. We saw a lot in the, sp uh, in the spring with some very cold weather in April and May, but we're seeing it build back now in towards Greenland and we're plunging in northerly winds, which aren't going to be cold, but they're going to be cool, giving temperatures probably around or below average and a lot of rain sh and showers along with that and just looks repeated bouts of rain coming in off the Atlantic. So do cherish the next few days of dry weather before this weekend's deluge does come as it does look like beyond that it does look very unsettled. There will be dry days of course um, but it does look like a lot of days are going to have some rain and a lot of cloud around as well. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, that's well reflected over the next couple of days. Temperatures are high, around 4 or 5 degrees above average, and there's very minimal precipitation. Maybe a few odd showers around tomorrow, but generally most areas are dry. Before we see massive precipitation um, spike as the temperatures start to drop to around average with those thunderstorms and heavy rain moving in. And then for the foreseeable future, temperatures are around or below average. It can feel quite cold out there, especially when we do have some heavy rain and persistent rain. Um, and, temp and precipitation signal looks generally pretty high, um, so it reaffirms that unsettled low pressure sort of theme. If we do have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see over the next two days, maybe high temperatures getting into the high 20s, but starting to cool down, um, especially in the south, as we start to put in that low pressure, more cloud and more mixing of air by Friday and Saturday, with temperatures only getting around the mid 20s or so. Beyond that, then we do start to see temperatures sort of stabilize around low 20s as we do have that cooler air but it's not very cold or anything just coming off the atlantic mixing the air a bit more so temperatures are going to be around 21 22 degrees probably further eastwards and then further, further westwards nearer to the those off uh, onshore winds coming in from the west probably likely to be around high teens if not around 20 degrees or so for the foreseeable future now if we do have a look at the thunderstorms we're going to be seeing this weekend. I'll first start by having a look at the CAPE charts as um, these are a good indicator of the energy in the atmosphere. You can see this afternoon there was quite a lot of CAPE around, just like yesterday, but we haven't quite had the ability to break the cap and we haven't really triggered too many thunderstorms today. We'll look at the radar at the end of the video and there are a couple of thunderstorms taking off, but widely nothing too much and you'd expect a lot more activity with this map, Cape. But we are sitting under high pressure, so it's not giving um, the lift to the energy that is in the atmosphere. We see that similarly through tomorrow, where we do have more Cape around, especially further westwards, and we could see some showers break out within that. Again, it really does depend 
on whether those showers can break the cap. Quite a lot of um, significant cape in, especially Central Ireland. Um, we'll have to look at that, and we'll have to look at that on the radar tomorrow and see what sort of convection does take place. And then for Friday, generally the Cape does sort of disintegrate away, remaining a little bit in Ireland and Northern England and parts of Scotland as well. Before we do start to see increased Cape coming in from the south, especially to central southern areas, especially southeastern areas as well. And this is not the most Cape we've seen over the last few days, or we're going to be seeing over the next few days. But it's with more unstable air, with lift. So it's going to have a lot of precipitation within it. It's going to have thunderstorms within it. And this just shows you where we could see the thunderstorm risk along central and southern England in southwestern parts and around the London, um, Essex and potentially Kent area where we've got some quite significant cape. We could be seeing some cells pop up there, some multi-celled storms as well. So we really have to keep an eye on that Um over the course of the weekend looking at the convection and looking at the radar as well if we do have a look at the 10 meter winds as well this does give an indication of convergence lines we'll briefly skip to this weekend so don't want to look too much over the next few days this is as it could trigger a few storms over the next couple of days but it will be quite localized but we can see as we head overnight into Saturday, we see this convergence zone set up across central southern England you can see winds coming in from the east but then towards the centre of the low, we've got winds coming up from the south. And where these hit, along the M4 corridors, where we could see some intense thunderstorms come off. It just gives that extra lift along with the cape. We could see those thunderstorms pop off. And that convergence line does move northwards and sort of does sort of uh, disintegrate in its, um, in its size as the winds start to merge a little bit more together. Um, but you can still see it is there and could be the real spark to those thunderstorms we could be seeing if we do just have a look at the raw precipitation charts now you can see there are a few thunderstorms this evening not as widespread as this precipitation chart is showing through tomorrow we do have a few thunderstorms outbreaking in northern england potentially western areas as well um widely nothing too much in uh in ireland so not thinking the uh, storms are going to break the cap and then we do see some more showers break out and thunderstorms in Ireland, Northern England, parts of Scotland before we see that heavy rain and thunderstorms spread up from the southwest through many areas before slowly petering out as it heads northwards out of the Cape and we do see some heavy showers and thunderstorms come in behind it but as we saw by the Met Office forecast they are thinking potentially Sunday has got a higher chance of being thundery Potentially Saturday's more likely just to be heavy torrential rain with a few lightning strikes and a few thunderstorms. This is looking like along that occluded front there's going to be a lot of cloud, a lot of rain, and that might inhibit storm activity a little bit. But I can't rule out storms, it's just looking at Sunday at the moment, which is out of the time frame of the WRF. It does look like we can have the highest chance of storms. If we do have a look at the really icon run, I'll see in the next couple of days. Not too many showers around, maybe a few ice showers around through Friday and Thursday before the heavy rain and thunderstorms head up from the south, spiralling in for many areas through early Saturday morning and through Saturday afternoon before slowly petering out and coming lighter before we see another shipment of heavy rain and storms through Sunday before that low eventually comes on shore, the centre of the low, spiralling that showers around in a circle in a spiral shape before eventually it does exit through monday but still showers and thunderstorms in the east if we do have a look at precipitation accumulations by the end you can see widely across central southern england we're seeing an inch so 25 millimeters potentially two inches up to 50 millimeters and when we do see thunderstorms pop off that could double these amounts and that's where we start to see the met office um estimations of around 100 millimeters in the worst affected spots but of course these models don't forecast the rainfall from these thunderstorms too well as remember thunderstorms can drop 20 millimeters of rain in 20 minutes and then 10 miles away it can drop five millimeters of rain in an hour um just simply because of the rainfall rates i've got such um strong gradients um so we're really just going to, have to keep an eye on the radar and what sort of convection is going to be happening over the weekend if we do have a look at the arpege over the next few days, 
You can see by um, tomorrow afternoon, there's a few showers breaking out in western areas, but again, will slowly peter out throughout the evening. Through Friday, maybe some showers in southwestern areas, and Ireland, Scotland as well. And then through Friday afternoon, showers going to gather before that heavy rain starts moving, thunderstorms moving as well. Now, the RPH does underdo precipitation rates a little bit, but there will be showers, heavy rain, and torrential thunderstorms within that before it slowly sort of... Um, it does look like it might stall a little bit on the arpege along that convergence zone in the Midlands before eventually petering out before that low does come and provide more showers. Now, interesting on the arpege, the centre of the low stays out in the channel and towards northern France, which could mean the thunderstorm risk does diminish a little bit towards Sunday. So you can still see there is a bit of uncertainty on the exact track of the thunder of the centre of the low and therefore the thunderstorm. So we just got to keep an eye on that for. Um, uh, for the weekend. If we finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, we'll briefly have a look at temperatures as there still can be some high temperatures in the next couple of days and then we'll have a look at the precipitation. You see through, to through tonight, again another quite muggy night. Temperatures only dropping around to 20 degrees or 19, 20 degrees in city centres, potentially a few degrees cooler in more rural areas. Through Thursday afternoon, you see the sh heat shifts further westwards where you can see 31 or even 32 degrees, still 28, 29 in Northern Ireland, 28, 29 in Southern Ireland as well, and then in the northwest, still 30, 31 degrees. So the heat's definitely further westwards, and we could see an isolated 32, and maybe if we get lucky, we could break that Heathrow temperature record for this sort of heat wave um, of 32.4 degrees. Um, so we'll just have to see, really. But as we head through Friday, widely temperature's going to be a bit cooler. Um, temperatures only you know, around 25, 26 degrees, so for a lot of people it's going to be a respite from the heat. Maybe 28, 29 degrees in far northern areas and parts of Northern Ireland and, and Ireland as well, as we do have um, some hotter air remaining there. But for all areas, temperatures are going to be a lot cooler through Saturday afternoon. Temperatures widely into the low uh, 20s, maybe even only high teens where we see the heavier rain. And then through Sunday, temperatures again much lower than we've had this week with highs around 21 or 22 degrees. If we do have a look at the precipitation rates, you can see over the course of tomorrow afternoon, there are a few showers in western areas, and we'll just have to keep an eye on how that develops on the radar tomorrow. Again, for Friday, maybe a few showers in Ireland, especially in then maybe some western parts of Wales and northern England, maybe Scotland as well. And then through Saturday, we see an initial band of heavy thundery rain move up from the southwest with some thunderstorms along it before more persistent rain um, starts to build in further eastwards and looks like it's just going to develop as well, which could be uh, symbolic of thunderstorm activity um, popping up, um, sort of homegrown storms. So we'll really have to keep an eye on that. And then more showers and thunderstorms throughout Sunday. And persistent rain at points, but generally does look very showery on this uh, Met Office run. And we'll just really have to keep an eye on what happens in a Monday. More thunderstorms around. So looking quite um, quite significant this weekend for rainfall and thunderstorms as well. So we'll really have to just have to keep an eye on it. As all the models at the moment are showing slightly different outcomes. Um, but we are a couple of days away, of course, so there is still a little bit of uncertainty in the exact positioning of the low pressure system, exact positioning of the fronts, and the exact location of thunderstorm activity. So we really just have to keep an eye on it and make sure you do keep updated on my channel, as I'll do have I'll I'll have another um, video update tomorrow. We'll have a look at this in detail as well. So anyway. If we finally have a look at the live radar, just uh, last thing in the video, just to have a look at the latest on those few isolated cells we've got going around. Now at the moment we do have um, a small isolated cell in Surrey that does look like it's weakening now, but it had popped up as it went over the Surrey hills, um, the, the hills giving a little bit of lift, and then we've also seen a few isolated cells in Yorkshire, northwestern areas, again along the hills and the mountains, giving it that lift. And then again, another a couple of isolated cells in Northern Ireland, and generally all other areas are dry, sunny, and very warm. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.